Did you know there are four common orthopedic surgeries being performed today that may have no long-term benefits? In this video, we'll examine each of these surgeries, explore their flaws, and discuss alternative options that are less risky and more effective to long-term health. Hey everybody, welcome back for another episode of Physio Show. The first two surgeries we will cover today are commonly known as clean-out procedures. These are minimally invasive surgeries where nothing is being repaired, so these procedures have quick recoveries compared to other more invasive surgeries. The first of these surgeries is called arthroscopic knee debridement, which is a surgery often used for people with arthritis and is utilized in cases where the person is not yet a candidate for total knee replacement. The surgeon uses a small camera and instruments to remove damaged tissue and bone spurs that are suspected to be causing pain and impact joint movement. The second type of cleanup procedure is called subacromial decompression. This is similar to arthroscopic knee debridement where it is minimally invasive with the goal of removing irritated tissue. But the surgeon also attempts to create more space in the shoulder to prevent impingement of the tendons with shoulder movement. However, studies consistently show that these two cleanout procedures are no better than non-surgical interventions in providing long-term pain relief. Even worse, some studies have shown that they are no better than sham surgery. Sham surgery is where the surgeon goes in and washes out the joint with saline, but no actual procedure takes place. And yes, people sign up for these studies so they know what they're getting into. Now there is research that some people do report some short-term improvement in pain, but over time, these advantages often don't stick around. But if the surgery is no better than no intervention at all in the long term, why do people report relief at least in the initial stages? Well, researchers believe the initial positive response is likely attributed to two factors. The first reason is that the person receiving surgery is forced to rest the painful area for four to six weeks after surgery, resulting in pain reduction simply because the body part isn't being used. The second factor is attributed to the placebo effect. The placebo effect is a psychological phenomenon where a person experiences real improvements in symptoms after receiving a treatment that has no therapeutic effect. These improvements are attributed to the individual's belief that the treatment will have an effect. Unfortunately, the relief often doesn't last, resulting in outcomes similar to those who don't undergo surgery. Our next surgery is another common procedure performed for those with knee pain. The meniscus is the shock absorber of the knee that helps to reduce pressure in the joint. In cases of knee arthritis, it is also common for people to have degenerative meniscal tears. A partial meniscectomy involves the surgeon going in and removing a part of the frayed or torn meniscus to reduce pain and improve joint motion. Studies investigating the efficacy of partial meniscectomy for degenerative meniscal tears are finding no statistically significant difference in pain or function when compared to those who receive physical therapy alone. Not only this, but this procedure can come with some significant complications. Research has shown an increased prevalence of arthritis in those who receive partial meniscectomy. This is thought to be due to the removal of shock absorbing tissue, resulting in increased stress through the joint. The prevalence of arthritis is even higher in patients who have larger amounts of meniscal tissue removed and those who have pre-existing cartilage damage. Younger patients who undergo partial meniscectomy are at an even higher risk of developing arthritis, possibly because they engage in more impactful activities that put additional stress on the already compromised joint. Moving on to the back, degenerative disc disease is a common occurrence as we age, affecting the spinal discs that cushion our vertebrae. Spinal fusion surgery aims to fuse vertebrae using bone grafts and hardware to reduce the stress through the joints, ligaments, and nerves in the spine. However, studies suggest limited benefits over non-operative treatments. This is why the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons recommends spinal fusion surgery as a last resort, emphasizing its consideration only after exhausting non-surgical options and exclusively in cases of spinal instability or severe nerve compression. But why do these surgeries lack efficacy and long-term relief? Well, a big flaw of these approaches is that they are predominantly performed to address chronic pain. Chronic pain very often results in alterations in pain processing, causing increase in pain perception. In other words, the nervous system sends off pain signals more easily, like an overly sensitive fire alarm that goes off without the presence of a fire. 
but these surgeries have no effect on pain processing, so the alarm continues to go off. Another issue is that degenerative changes seen on x-rays and MRIs are very common and have generally low correlation with pain. So just because someone has signs of arthritis or minor structural changes such as meniscal tearing on imaging does not mean they will have or will not have pain. So treating the degenerative changes may not necessarily help. This is because pain is a complex and multifactorial experience, influenced by an interaction of biological, psychological, and behavioral factors. So expecting to fix pain by simply cleaning out a joint or fusing a vertebrae is an incredibly simplistic way of viewing a complex issue. And lastly, many of these chronic conditions are caused or reinforced due to faulty movement patterns and deconditioning brought on by pain, which does not magically resolve with surgery. These issues require training through targeted exercises, focus on restoring mobility and improving control and strength of the surrounding muscles. So what's the best course of action? Well, due to the lack of significant long-term outcomes of these procedures, exhausting non-surgical options is your best bet. This includes exercise, physical therapy, and medication management as needed. Addressing muscle weakness or stiffness can help you reduce stress through the area and manage pain more effectively. Also, modifying activities and addressing any behavioral or psychological factors that may be intensifying the pain experience can be beneficial. So just because you have the option of surgery does not mean it's the best choice. It is crucial for patients and healthcare providers to stay informed of current evidence to avoid unnecessary and risky procedures. So before you consider going under the knife, make sure you know what you're getting into. Thanks for watching this episode of Physio Show. Make sure to hit that like button to help this video spread and help more people. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to learn more about your body, how it works, and what it needs to keep moving.